Thank you, Atlas. Pretty solid game there for SKT. One half of the desk was correct here. Let's dive into it, though. Let's break down some pretty high-level play there by both teams. Oh, I don't want to let, let Spawn off this easy. They're, they're, <laughs> they're going to get crushed. It's going to be one-sided, huh? Hey, I said it was going to be one-sided. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> <said, laughs> you said EDG. Do you have a moment to talk about the Church of Easy Hoon? I, I'm not even going to talk about that. I'm just going to say that when we threw up yesterday what the weakness of EDG was, if there could possibly be one, I said pick bands. And you guys all called me insane yeah that was the worst pick band phase i have seen coming through in a long time i actually don't understand at what point of the game they thought their composition was stronger yeah i don't understand the tristana at all well you could say that their comp was terrible but the skt composition was one of my favorite comps of all time it's five threat composition each champion on that team is a huge threat to any team you got knock up cc's a lot of damage and a thing that goes unnoticed is the fact that these champions have Really cheap power spikes. Rumble needs a haunting guys and a sorcerer shoes. Nar, on the other hand, you know, he might need a war mox, might need a randuins, maybe even a maw. A Lulu, by the time that she finishes her Athene's Holy Grail and Death Cap, Vlad's already sitting at three items. His item spikes are Will of the, Will of the Ancients, a Abyssal Scepter. It's really cheap, so they can fight really early. And Tristana needs two items. Well, Callista only one. Force these super early fights when EDG cannot even contest at all, and they try to contest, and look at what happened. They got rolled over. Yeah, but that's not the EDG we're used to seeing. We've seen EDG fall so far behind. They'll give up four dragons. They'll give up the first Baron and then fight you at 45 minutes in the game. That EG, EDG that we just saw then realized that their team comp got outclassed, and they didn't pick for the late game. Jinx was available. Deft is, and I will stick by this. Bang had a fantastic <laughs> game, but that is a game. Deft is still the premier AD carry, and if he was on Jinx, they at least have something to fall back on. I feel like also that was a testament to how well uh, Callista was played in this game. Like, if anybody wants to learn Callista, this is the game to look out for, and this is the player to look out for. Yeah, Bang's Callista is a little different than what we're seeing in NA, because what he does is he maxes Q first, and he's constantly throwing a Ren stack on a minion, possibly two, queuing through it, and it does enough damage since he's maxing Q to go through it, and then it hits Deft over and over again, and then he just pops the Ren, and it's so much damage because of the damage of the spear on top of it. And we're seeing his lane partner, Annie, walk up, throw the stun. So he just basically lines it up so he can knock it down after. And he gets a Sentinel passive on top of it. It's really good because in NA, people are maxing E still and building Runan's Hurricane. People eventually were like, all right, let's stop building Runan's first, get a BF sword. But then they didn't adapt the skill order from swapping it over from E to Q. You should be maxing Q first if you're going for the BT. Clearly a lot of passionate discussion to be had about this game. We'll get right back into it in just a moment. We've got shocks at the interview lounge for a word with a member of the victorious SKT.